and welcome back. Let it, let it, oh, oh. Welcome back to White Claw Wednesday, episode 117. Welcome. We're just, we're fighting with the, uh, with the static, you know. The Constant static. audio static. Static is. Sound quality is an art form. It truly is. It is. Shouts out all the boom operators out there. All right, let's crack these things. Shouts. Ooh. 117? Yeah, 117. 117, yeah. brother. So I'm back with my partner in crime here. Yeah, shout out to Frank. Solo episode last week. Uh, things were a little too crazy for me, as you can expect. I didn't even take a sip. A lot of fun to do that. I had a good time. Yeah. Looking forward to doing it when you're cruising on your honeymoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. I didn't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Got you mentioned you. that last last episode. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ryan is officially married. I am a married man. Congratulations. For updates in our life. The virtual White Claw <laughs> audience applauds. Yes. And, uh, wow. It was, oh my gosh. it was a beautiful ceremony. It Great was time. a beautiful ceremony. Frank did a fantastic job. Dude, I haven't even, I mean, we haven't even talked, but oh, yeah, yeah. literally like everyone has been complimenting how well you did. They're like, he should like, he should do it professionally, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like some, somebody even asked for your speech. My grandma, I think asked for your speech. She wanted to like reread it. Oh, um, that, that is why, uh, what's it called? That makes sense. Why Rory asked me to send it to him. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. She'll, you know, it's funny. I sent her the original copy, so she'll read the, uh, She'll read the version that has the truth serum joke at the end. The truth serum, <laughs> the truth serum joke that I got. Well, out. you still used it. You but still I still used it. it. I just, it just didn't just say different. truth serum. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah, just. Yeah. It was more of like a just a in your in the. I said honest state. An honest state. His most honest state. Yeah. I don't even know if everybody got it. I think most people. I think did. most people. I think did most too. people. Did. <laughs> it was really great. He was cracking a lot of jokes. He cracked uh, what like five or six during the the speech and yeah i had a, I had pretty got good. a laugh every single time yeah and also you know i had the it was crazy like i literally felt so emotional and yeah. I, and i was able to use the tears exactly like perfectly where like i had i wanted to cry the whole time but i was able to keep it together while doing the speech and then i kind of had like the middle point the middle point of my speech i had the so honored I could cry part. And then and like I actually released some emotion. Started crying. <laughs> and then I just closed it right back and I kept going. I was so proud of myself. Was it like, was perfect. It was honestly perfect, <laughs> dude. So it was such a nice day. We mm-hmm. did it in, in Temecula for those. It was that a really know. nice day. And yeah, yeah. everything went off oh, the way it was good. There were it went off without a hitch. Exactly. Some dude. would say. Yeah, oh, yeah, and then uh, wow, uh, the party after the party after was awesome. Was thank you for that. Thank you for that open bar, by the oh, way. Oh yeah, no problem. That's a huge <laughs> plus, dude. And that changes everything. That changes everything. Yeah, it, it, really, it really does. It, it does. really does. I think we could have gotten away with just doing beer and wine. I think it would have kept some people level. Some people were, you know. <laughs> some people, <made> it. <laughs> but I'm happy. I'm happy. You know. I think that's a that's a. Uh, that shows that it's a good party, you know. Yeah, dude. When you have that makes it feel like, a f- like as official as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's true. If you're at a party and there's an open bar, uh huh. Forget about it, dude. Like dude, you're at no. a you're at open a, bar. You're yeah. at a real party. Like that's a party. <laughs> like I'm not yeah. talking. I'm not talking. Go over to the little table filled with you know plastic handles and mixers and yeah, make yourself yeah, a drink. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. like you walk up to the bartender and you tell him any drink and he's. He'll make it for you. Making it, yeah. yeah, like that's, full bar. That's cool. Yeah. That's so cool. No, it was super. It was super fun. I mean, people. The shots were flowing too. Oh, the shots were flowing like I crazy. Was surprised I surprised how many people were taking shots. You know what? It was the <laughs> shot. I took one shot. Yeah, tequila shot. Yeah, and tequila. Shots. That was what did me in, because I started with a glass of champagne, mm-hmm. and then I had three screwdrivers. Well, everyone had champagne. No, right? but I, I mean like. That was my second glass of champagne. Oh, I oh, meant like oh. the first thing I got from the bar was a, champagne. Was a glass oh, of champagne. Oh, wow, wow. And then I did a few screwdrivers, three total. And then I had my champagne. Remind me what a screwdriver is. Just vodka it's orange? vodka and orange juice. Okay. okay. With, with, and then here's the cool thing about being at a, at a real bar. Because when you're making yourself a screwdriver, you know, you don't get the little fun. They got the orange garnishes. So oh, they're So they're nice. taking like the pe- slices of orange and yeah, throwing it in there. So that's yeah, a real yeah. nice addition. Yeah, but yeah, true, so I got true. three of those. And then I have the second glass of champagne for all the toasts. That's, yeah. that's five drinks yeah. and I'm good. Like I'm, I'm cruising so nice at that point, but I get dragged into a shot 
yeah. by you know by by some of the ladies just just going shot crazy. And there I, were I, a couple people that were going, going shot, shot crazy. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I got I got grabbed by I got thrown into a group with uh, by one of them, uh-huh. and it was just a it was bad timing because turned down for what was was on uh, and like it you might have been a part of the shot I'm not sure but we took I a, probably we, was. we took a tequila shot right at the first drop of turn down for what and we all took it so like I was just I didn't want to do the shot and it was bad because the music gave me the confidence that I could do the shot yeah so I put it down like that and it was. And it just hit, it put me in the nauseous level for the rest of the night. The, the drinks were flowing so much but that I had to. I at had the to, end of the night. Thank oh God. yeah, yeah. 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 Well, the drinks were flowing so much that I I literally had to tell people to get back on the dance floor because everyone was hanging out by the bar. <laughs> You're just hanging out there drinking it, just, yeah. just finishing their drink, going back. I'm like. We don't have this. We we don't have time for this. You know, get out there. I remember you get the Corona, <laughs> get the Corona, yeah, like yeah, ten oh three or something. Yeah, yeah and yeah. you got the last drink. Oh yeah, yeah no, because he said bars closed. Bars and I was closed. Like, I'm the groom. Can yeah. I get one more? And he's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I got you. And then and then Interpre walked up and it was like guest of the show. He he came up and you tried to get another yeah. drink and they're like, nah, ah, you're done, you're done. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny too. Like, I mean, I was taking half shots all night because because they were they were filling people, those up and dude. they were filling them up and people were just getting me shots. They're like, oh yeah, like. People would just come up to me. I'm like on the dance floor dancing. Like, like, they're like, here, take shot. one, take one with take us. It's like shot. three people. I'm just like, okay. But then yeah, I'd, yeah. I'd pour half of mine in theirs. Uh, that was like, <laughs> that was the deal, you know? Dude, yeah, they were. Whew. That that was the thing about the shots. They were, they were doing the you know disposable cups for shots, which makes sense. But they weren't doing shot oh, size disposable cups. I didn't even cups. notice that. Didn't Did you not notice that? No. They must have ran out of glasses because I'm pretty sure the first shot I took was, was in like was a, in a glass was in those like nice <laughs> nice thick, shot glass thick. The ones that you kind of yeah. do tequila See, shots. I took, in. A, I took a shot so late in the night of shots that yeah. at that point we had just run through all the yeah. shot glasses yeah. because they were doing just like the full, you know, the see-through plastic Dixie cups. Yes, they were just they were. I remember those too, actually. Yeah. And you know what? I'm not. You know, this is this is dumb to say because those are professional bartenders. So they, oh, we're not they, hating. We're not hating. Yeah. So now I'm realizing. I was thinking to myself in the moment, like, oh, they're pouring shots into cups, plastic cups, so they're gonna like miss pour in the sense where you're going to get a bigger shot because they're pouring into a bigger mm-hmm. thing. But then I thought of it. I was like, no, just now. I was like, these are professional bartenders. Oh, yeah, they know. If they're busting out a shot in a normal glass like that, they know, like, the time to mm-hmm. have it pour. It's like second nature. It's yeah. like they know the amount of seconds to have the bottle yeah. tipped. Yeah. So they, they're, you're getting regular shots, but I think they feel bigger because they're in a big cup. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind, yeah, of, yeah. it's kind of a weird psychological thing. Dude, I took a shot with my mom and – with Stephanie, Stephanie Ferguson, shout out. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like this random shot. Like, I think <laughs> Stephanie brought it to us. And I'm just like, okay, like we're going for it. And your mom was like, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, she complimented our dance, which, by mm. the way, dude, has been a big hit post hey, post wedding. That dance, I, you know what's funny? I remember you, I forgot what oh, you. Oh, dude, I have to show you something. We'll carry on. I forgot what you said about the dance about, like, oh, you'll know when, like, it happens. You'll know when it's supposed to heat up. Yeah, you There's, know. I said something like you'll that. You'll know when the heat up part No, comes. I said a song's going to come on that I that everyone but probably no, knows. Yeah. You know, this. And, I chose this song because I wanted a song that bridged generations. Yeah. And that my generation knew off the top of their head, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But. That was a good choice. Uh, so I chose God's plan, everyone. <laughs> and, <laughs> Everybody, was wondering, yeah. and, Everybody knows God's plan by right. And but yeah, it, can't, it, it was a sweet switch, and you had the dance move along with the beat switch. It was very nice. Yeah, and what was crazy was when we flipped that song on, and I took my jacket off mm-hmm. and threw it aside. The crowd went so loud at that point, and then right when it started, that I I couldn't even hear the music. Me and my mom couldn't hear the music, so we were going off pure memory, you nice. know. And that's how you know that's that's where the talent is, because you looked like you were still in beat. By the way, I mean there were there were a few points where I could listen, I could hear it. And I'm like, yeah. okay, like I'm a little, I'm a little ahead, I'm a little okay, behind, yeah. but, but yeah, dude, it was Overall, so much fun. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you lost the noise of the the song. Yeah, well, you know what I? But really, we were, we did lose our minds when you took off. Your it, was we high, were, it was pretty. We were pretty. Just because like that was, and God's plan came on, so like it was double whammy, you know. Yeah, and it was it was just especially cool to see that sort of uh, mother son dance, you know. Well, what was really cool was because it's just an it's an extra little 
little yeah. jazz up. You and know? me and my mom spent a lot of time on it. You know, yeah, like we were we were rehearsing it. It was we were it was rehearsing. It was a which number. Is really cool. I think it I was mean, a legit a, a legit dance number. Let me show you this, dude. I I it completely slipped my mind, but let me show you this, dude. Yeah. What do you got? Is it like a? Sorry, I'm opening. Today, I'm t- opening TikTok, everybody. Today okay? we're making a Japanese something. No, I'm opening what TikTok. <laughs> what if one of those um, <laughs> those videos come on where it's super like inappropriate? Oh yeah, like one of the videos you think is gonna be something, but it just ends up being a <laughs> sex noise, like that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm showing Frank a TikTok from our. Oh photographer's tiktok account that we had hired for the oh, you made the tiktok account no no no. our photographer's tiktok account who we hired for the wedding so, so they're professional you, photographers oh did you, you know? make it on their page though is that what i'm saying did you make it on their page um, like your dance and your no, at the wedding no, no, no because no. i mean they're they're photographer but they also do video as well uh, so they recorded okay. it okay 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 Oh, they got it. Okay. So here, I want you to do this, and then yeah. I want you to back out, okay? And then tell me what you notice, okay? So here. Okay. Okay, I'm checking it out. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Okay, I'm watching the dance. The sicko mode part, I forgot. A, you know, I... First of all, uh, they used the wrong song. It's supposed to be God's plan. Yeah, see, that's what... It, when you said God's plan, I was like, wait, I don't remember it being God's plan. I remember it being a completely different no, song. No, it was God's plan, dude. It was God's plan. But but they did... They just put... You know how you can slap a song on, like, your TikTok, right? Like, they just put it over sicko mode. Oh, Anyways, okay. Wait, wait. Oh, so... Okay, so, no, I just backed out. And what okay. I, Whoa, nice, Ryan. 222,000 views. Can you believe that? <laughs> Compared to all their other videos. Nice. They've got some. They've got they some do have some bigger. They've got some millies. But yeah. around, it's funny, right around your 222,000 views, you got lower numbers. So it kind of makes it pop even yeah. more. But so, so you're telling me that when I was witnessing it in person, God's plan, God's plan was playing. Yes. But right then they put sick of mode over it. Which, you know... I, which is which is probably which what do I know because this has two hundred thousand views, but at the same time it's like, come on, like use the right song, you know? <laughs> well it's funny because like I, I almost in a weird way remember like watching that video made me think of it as in my past mode. as it was sick of it. I was no, like, wait, it was sick of that was playing. Well, and you know, we choreographed it for God's plan. And, yeah. you know, they have different timings on the yeah. beats, so like it it looks a lot better with you know God's plan in the background, but I, I do um, got to say the one, the one, the one, the 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 hit the, the Fortnite, I don't even know that's the called. one, the one Fortnite dance that you yeah, hit, yeah, dude, you hit it really good. That was pretty it fire, looked, huh? Oh, man. I'm telling you, as stupid as those Fortnite dances look, when you do them like good, it looks so cool. And that was right, and at that the, was what you did. Like I was just yeah. like, I'm like that was my favorite part was when you hit that. I was like, oh, what is it? What's it is. that dance move called? I don't know what it's called, but you hit it really good. You're kind of just you, jumping you, up and like kicking your leg out, it, and yeah, your, and your whole body. <laughs> It's so like, silly. You're give, it is silly, but it's yeah. like when you do it, like when you commit and you have some dance ability, yeah. which you did, it, it looks really sweet. Yeah. It looks really sweet. And that's why they're such a big thing on Fortnite is because, um, yeah, I mean, whoa, shit, that won't kind of, you hear Someone, that, I guess? Someone's, Someone's breaking in. <laughs> Somebody's in the house. Yeah, dude, that was, that was a great, uh, great freaking dance, man. Yeah, and that was right at the, uh, the part in the song where it goes... Um, imagine if I never met the bro skis and you're, and yeah. you're hitting and it. you're hitting bro that. Whoa, skis whoa. like boom, yeah, boom. yeah 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 uh-huh. oh man it was so cool anyways so uh yeah so yeah so the Lakers got eliminated from the playoffs so <laughs> they suck yeah they <laughs> do what the heck happened man I don't know man they were favored to win it all by Vegas before the season started so stupid. favored to win it all and they missed the play in like they needed they they couldn't even make it in the they top ten. They couldn't even 10. make top ten in their conference. In the conference. What are you doing? And they have they couldn't be LeBron. Bit, they have LeBron Westbrook, Anthony Davis, Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony, Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza. I mean, they have a solid, solid team. Yeah, it's they like do. it just didn't work. It didn't work, but at the same time, you have all those guys, mm, and you can't even if make you it. In put the top 10. put those. 
put five or three top players, just let's just say three, three mm-hmm. top players on on any other team, yeah, they at least make playoffs. They might be a bad team in terms of playoffs, but they at least make playoffs. They at least make the playoffs, yeah. Dude, that's what's crazy. Like, There's the, like way too much star, star talent on that team. The Spurs. The Spurs are they're the 10th seed in the West. The Spurs. Mm-hmm. Can you name a player on the Spurs? Mm-mm. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, oh, Tim Duncan. <gasps> that was like six years ago. <laughs> I know. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Dude, though. It was like the Spurs took the tenth spot. Yeah. With basically next to nobody besides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just they're just a bunch of guys. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think it comes from like having pressure on you and not being up to the pressure is a bad is a bad combination because it's like you almost get down on yourself. You know, because every time uh, I saw yeah. the Lakers play this season, they looked so bummed out. Like they didn't want to. They just. They just didn't work. Just didn't put in. The, yeah, exactly. But also, it gets to a point where like you just have to not care. Yeah. As much as some teams do, you mm-hmm. know, this is what I'm saying. It's like you can't have a team with that many good players on it. Yeah. And still have a valid reason to not make playoffs. And LeBron, you know? LeBron's averaging over 30 points a game. Yeah. LeBron's still really good. And he's good. still really, and it's like, what the? I just, it's just, it's, it's. Oh, I can't. So, but um, yeah, they're just bad. They're just they bad. said oh. that um, they're gonna fire Frank Vogel. Frank coach, Vogel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did it already happen or no? No, but that's that's been the big that's been the big talk, big talk. Of the, I mean, that's basically been the talk of the season ever since people realized that they weren't gonna be that good this year. It's like, because like they weren't that he, good last year either. Uh, that is true. They got knocked out by the Suns in the first round. And uh, not only did the Lakers get eliminated from the playoffs last night, but the Suns were the ones to do it to them. Do it twice, two years in a row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Eliminated from the playoffs, and you then must just eliminated really them from contention <laughs> at all. Oh yeah, it's nice. I'm riding high right now. I'm riding yeah, very that's high. That's good. That's good, man. I'm happy for you. It feels good. <laughs> hey, but it could all come. Oh man, I just don't know. I just don't know. I'm worried that the same thing is going to happen again. I'm worried that we're going to make it to the finals, and then Chris Paul is just going to disappear. Isn't there's only three more games left, right? Three, three more games, yeah. Season, three more games season. in the regular season, yeah. The uh, the play in tournament starts April twelfth and goes through the fifteenth, and that's basically when you get the seventh through ten seeds in both conference playing each mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. Seven and eight's gonna play. Nine and ten's gonna play. Winner of seven and eight becomes the seventh seed. Loser plays the winner of nine mm-hmm. and ten, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the winner of that game becomes the eighth seed. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty like once you figure out like what it is, I. Obviously, I really like it. I like it too. They I put it, they put it in to make more money, of course, because yeah. it's all about the money with these sports and businesses. Yeah. But at the same time, the great thing about like that's the great thing about like entertainment, and that it being a money making business like everything else is that when a company successfully comes up with an idea that mm-hmm. actually is a good way to make more money, yeah, it's like ninety nine percent good for the consumer. Oh, for sure. Because if it's working, that means the consumer likes it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Well, especially, so I don't like, know if you said in the entertainment business. But yeah, yeah, in, in, yeah the in the entertainment business. business. Like, yeah. So they made the play-in tournament in order to get more eyes in watching more games more and make more money. Yeah, yeah. And That's it ends it up yeah. doing exactly that. Yeah. Because so now, I guess. now you have two teams that arguably could be like either just as shitty as the teams above it or just as good as the teams above it, which creates a fun little... One one game limit because that you don't get that's the thing you miss in the NBA playoffs that you get in like March Madness and NFL football playoffs is you get the single elimination kind of gone. There's like no sudden death type thing. Exactly, yeah, but yeah, with right. this playing tournament, you get the first few days of the playoffs as sudden death games. It's very cool. I, I really like it because I also think that it it sort of it gives an advantage to the teams in those three spots that have been four, doing four spots, seven, four spots. Seven, eight, nine, oh, that's ten. right. Yeah, yeah those four spots that have been doing well recently, right? Yes, exactly. Because you often, oftentimes you have a, a good team in the beginning of the season and then mm-hmm. they'll start falling off, yeah. you know? You also have tank, it also prevents tanking in, 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 oh, in a, in oh, a good true, way. Oh, true, true, true. That's true. Because it's like, you could be in the bottom tier of the conference, but you still have a chance to make the plan. So it sort of keeps the whole, oh, let's tank for a good draft pick Right, you know, not an option because it would become so obvious what would what was going on. Because like, imagine if a team is like in play, like almost like what the Lakers did, basically. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. Because it's almost like crazy. <laughs> like I I remember like most of the season I kept thinking like, okay, they they stink, 
but there's the ninth and tenth playing seeds that they'll probably be able to take advantage of. Yeah, I kept yeah, thinking yeah. that the whole season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be a nine or ten. They're going to play really hard. They're two playing games. They're going to luck into that. Like I, I kept thinking this, and honestly, I, I want the, wanted this to happen uh-huh. because I realized LeBron is as much as he, you know, kind of grinds my gears sometimes because he's you know beating my team or whatever. He's also so entertaining. Yeah, and it, it just, it's just kind of disappointing to have a season without LeBron in the playoffs. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's and even the league is almost like it's <laughs> the it, league. It's almost like the league saw this coming. Like they're like, all right, LeBron's getting old. He he can still score like crazy, still play like crazy, but he's still at he's now at that age where he can't carry a team to the sure, playoffs. Sure, sure, sure. I agree. So I think the NBA saw it as like, okay, let's let's kind of extend the. Uh, you know, let's make it a little easier to make it into the playoffs, and that way we can maybe like you know give LeBron a little you know oomph a little to bump. like because yeah. we want to keep as long as LeBron's playing in our league, we want him in the playoffs yeah. for again yep. more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But they but it's just the Lakers. Stink. They uh, stunk too bad. He used to be able to carry a team to the finals, to the, dude. That's exactly <laughs> that's what that's he used exactly to be able to what do. He did <laughs> when he was at his youngest yeah. and his just and most when he was fierce. On the Cavs when they yeah, when, won. Well, well, he had Kyrie well, at that time. He went. He went <clears> Cavs. And then he left the Cavs, went to the Heat, won right, two, right, two rings. Right. But went, he didn't carry that team. I mean, he was the best, dude, but he thing. had supporting players. I don't know if you know about this, but huh. he, when he first got to the Cavs, I think it was his 07. I think it was his fourth. I probably don't know this. Third or fourth season. So he, yeah. gets, he gets drafted in 03. Yeah. He goes to the finals in 07. He takes the, with the Cavs. With the Cavs. Yeah, he, yeah. He took probably one of the – it's so funny like because I can't – I think Mo Williams maybe was on that team. I think Mo Williams was on that team. But this is my point. I can name one, pl- like maybe, like I, there's a 50 50 shot that Mo was on that team with LeBron when he made it to the finals in 07. Not even sure. But this is my point, though. LeBron took the 2007 Cavs, who I can't name another player on, took them to the finals. They got swept by Tim Duncan and the Spurs. Mm-hmm. But still, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like you could probably light up the roster of the current Lakers with the, with the roster of the 2007 Cavs. And you minus LeBron from both equations. I bet the Lakers side still has more talent. Oh, probably. And this is exactly what I'm saying about LeBron now being at an age where he can, he can get it for himself still. Like he can still be the best, but he can't make everybody else the best. Yeah, anymore. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like the one thing that's left him. Is he used to be able to make everybody else great, but now he's the only one that's good. I wonder what he's thinking because I when when he first came to the Lakers. I don't really know, of course, the behind the scenes stuff, but I feel as if the talk was he's part of the whole orchestration who were picking Oh yeah. I want I want Anthony Davis. Everybody knows you know, I'm sure he was a huge part of the whole Westbrook thing. Social media has a nickname for LeBron. They call well, a lot of nicknames. But one of the nicknames they go with is La GM. La GM. <laughs> so they dropped the B R O N and they just terrible <laughs> name, dude. <laughs> but wait, wait, this is right. You gotta understand. I mean I get it. General manager. I get yeah, it. Yeah, but it. you got it. And it's well, LeBron. You have to do it, it's LeBron. But it's <laughs> this is this so what stupid. the internet does. They just do dumb. I know. Like the La people, GM. Like you'll go in the comments of like if LeBron post, you read the comments, you'll see La GM, you'll see La Garbage, you'll mm. see La, just just <laughs> La, like L E, just L E with a word next to it. That's just what people do. They just do it. It's easy. That's like it's one of the worst names to have because you can just put L E in front of it anything yeah and then exactly. all of a sudden it's it's lebron yes yeah, because it's it's a it's it's distinctly two syllables his name mm-hmm. it's, just, it's a distinct two syllables so you could just drop the one syllable and just have right a, have exactly. at it basically yeah, yeah. um but yeah i uh he he orchestrates for sure and the rumors are is so that like what is he orchestrating now is the question you know that's that's a good question but the rumors yeah. are that what he did was he Apparently went with Russell Westbrook over DeMar DeRozan slash Buddy Heald. So they DeMar DeRozan was in that in that he was a free trade talk? He was a free agent. Oh and, and apparently there was some third year that He's some, on the Bulls now, right? He's on the Bulls yeah. now and he's doing very well on the yeah, Bulls. Yeah. But that's the one person that apparently LeBron either like it's kinda up in the like you know, it's just it, like like, like, knows, like gossip, like yeah, like any knows, gossip. Yeah. Who really knows? But apparently the Lakers could have got DeMar DeRozan. Apparently the Lakers also could have got Buddy Heald, who is a really good three-point shooter. Mm-hmm. But LeBron was the one who said, no, we're doing Russell Westbrook. That is that is that is the that is the whispers among the sports world, is that LeBron made the decision that we're doing Russell Westbrook. 
And I thought of a good point. I was listening to sports radio. I was like, okay, so maybe LeBron didn't do that because maybe the Lakers did Russell Westbrook over Buddy Heald and DeMar DeRozan. This is why it's good gossip because you don't know who made the mistake in, in the end. True. So because you have the argument, oh, LeBron said no to DeMar, no to Buddy. Mm-hmm. I want Russell. Yeah. And the arguers who say that are the people who say, okay, Ru- LeBron looked at Russell as like a better opportunity for his legacy than Buddy Heald and DeMar DeRozan in the sense that Russell Westbrook has been a superstar his entire NBA career entire, pretty much. Entire, yeah, pretty much. But he's never won a ring. Yeah. And he's played with so many great players who have left him. Uh, so you have KD who couldn't win with Russ. Yeah. He left. Then you had James Harden yeah. who couldn't w- win with Russ, left. Paul George couldn't win with Russ, left. So LeBron sees all these great players who can't win a championship with Russ, and he's like, imagine like if I want to ring with him. Mm-hmm. Like That would be like like LeBron. Not only did he win five rings, six rings, whatever, but one of them he did with Russell Westbrook, the guy nobody else could do. Right, so right, LeBron's right. like licking his chops, thinking of his legacy. Give me Russell. That's the LeBron side. But yeah. then if you want to blame Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka, you know, the GM owner, all those people, people pulling the strings, you blame them by saying, okay, they say, LeBron, we can't have DeMar. We can't have Buddy. We got to go with Russell because he is way more famous. And we are the, oh, Los, An- we are the Los Angeles Lakers, and we don't we – don't, we choose star power over – Pure talent. I wonder at the end of the day, because think about think about like the Lakers have made a lot of big signs in their history. Yeah, yeah. You got Steve Nash, you got Will, uh, you got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you got Shaquille O'Neal. You just got like you got big stars that the Lakers have signed and just kind of up there. Yeah, know. yeah. So and, and I just don't. And so there's there's two sides of this argument. Which one do you take? I don't know. I find them both fascinating. I feel like the Lakers would have done really well in Canada though if they had picked up. DeMar DeRozan. I feel like he, he has. Because of his a, Toronto? Yeah, I think so. I think he's got some well, some good fans he, there, even though he never won a ring with them. Yeah, because he left right before they won that ring. Yeah. But still, I feel like he, I feel like a, a lot of it's credited towards him because he had invested, like, what was it, like five or six years or something crazy. Here's another interesting DeMar DeRozan yeah. fact. Huh. Before making the NBA, he played at USC. And before okay. playing basketball at USC, he grew up in Compton. So wow. He's, he's very much L.A. Mm. bred, in a sense. Mm. So that that was a... So was Westbrook, though, right? Wasn't he from... Same with... Re- he went he to UCLA. UCLA yeah. Also grew up in the L.A. area. Mm-hmm. Both. So that that's the thing. You got two great players yeah. who are both L.A. boys. And it's like, which one do you choose? They went with Westbrook. And it's uh-huh. really like... It's just, you know, water cooler gossip, like whichever who, – who, whose fault do you want to put it on? Like is it the owners and the GM or is it LeBron? Who made the fatal mistake of it we has need to be Russ? the owners, right? In the G- like, I, I I like to think it is just because of LeBron being a basketball player. I feel like he's, he's supposed got to know basketball. So much say though, he should know? know like exactly, but in a way it's like twenty like percent. I, I want to like think that got. he knows basketball more than they do. That's very so true. He should they probably like, lean on him a he lot. Like, he, he, I feel like he should have known that Demar or Buddy was a better option than Russell. Yeah, which which almost, which makes me kind of lead towards what, you know because the GM owner's fault. When I heard about the Buddy healed trade mm-hmm. or that somehow the Lakers were going to get him, I forgot the yeah. details of it. But when I heard about it, I was super stoked. Oh yeah, and then I think maybe should be yeah. and maybe two days later, mm-hmm. somehow. Russell Westbrook was in the picture, <laughs> yes, and and like, I was like, like whoa, whoa, like how did this happen? And this was late. This was like late in the yeah. trade, the off season, time. off season yeah. deadline, mm-hmm. whatever. And I mean, I was stoked for that trade too because like you know Russell Westbrook. But yeah, I would here's I would have been that same mindset as a Lakers fan. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who that, that's what that's what the odds makers thought. I mean, they're the odds makers. But you know, what was what's funny is everyone was talking about like there might be too much star power. It's like mm-hmm. who's going to carry the ball, you know? And that's like the whole thing this that, season. That right? was a big thing. Yeah, and it still is. So, yeah, I mean, it just didn't work out. And I think the the people that were criticizing it were right. Honestly, <laughs> I just I don't know what else to say. I just keep thinking of LeBron. I wonder what's going to happen this off season. Yeah, that's what I'm really. LeBron thinking. said, "Keep that same energy." Like when 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 the roster was announced, yeah. Keep uh, that same energy. Be this that was that was LeBron's response in like the first press conference. Once they got Carmelo, once they got Russell, yeah. and they made all the other trades, got Dwight Howard. Yeah, people were like, "Wow, the Lakers are a bunch of a bunch of old men." Like that 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 was <laughs> yeah. 
you, you were either a Lakers fan who was saying, "Oh my God, we're stacked, we're gonna win it all," yeah. or you were anybody else and were like, "Yeah, you guys are a bunch of old dudes. You're gonna suck." But is it Buddy Hield and uh, Demar Derozan are old too? You know, I, that's that's they're, they're yeah, that's right. A, no, I mean, I mean, Demar Derozan. Well, Buddy like Hield's definitely still He's in his twenties. Yeah, yeah, that's and I'm true. assuming Demar's in his early thirties. But still, it was funny to see LeBron take the podium after like the roster and all the internet buzz, and LeBron's like, "Yeah." Because someone asked him, like, hey, LeBron, you've been hearing about people saying that you guys are too old to, uh, you know, win a championship. Mm-hmm. Right? LeBron's like, all right, come come into the season. Keep that energy. <laughs> I just remember saying that. I was just like, all right, LeBron, I and will. I will. And you can't even make the play. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even make the play. I, I remember. But this is this is what Scott and I love to joke uh, about what, at, the, what? at the end of the day. We like to give these athletes shit and, like, laugh yeah, at them. Yeah, for like, sure. Oh, you lost. Yeah. Ah, or whatever. <laughs> but, hey, man. That's all we got on them. At the end of the day, those dudes are winning. Oh yeah, you for know? sure. Well, they're winning a lot more. They're than winning, we are, in yeah. s- exactly. They're winning in so many ways. So Scott and I laugh. We're like, all right, well, we gotta just gotta enjoy the one win we can get here. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like you know, there's a lot of things that, I mean, I like to call out people, the athletes that wear the the t-shirts under the and well, these are basketball <laughs> the t- basketball yeah, players. Yeah, the t-shirts under the jerseys. Like, I hate that you're so much. You're a professional basketball player. Like, how are you, you scared to show your arms, dude? <laughs> how are you? Show your damn muscles, dude. I know, it's insane. Like, dude, and you know what else is ridiculous. crazy? You you realize all the gear they get? They yeah. get they probably get a pack of fucking twenty. Like the dudes who wear the regular dudes in the NBA yeah. who don't wear the shirt under their jersey. Yeah. You can see sometimes when they're super sweaty or they're wearing a white jersey, you can see that underneath their jersey is a skin tight you know, wife beater style yep, NBA. Yep. It's just like a tank, like athletic a athletic mesh tank. Nylon, whatever. It's a, yeah. it, but it's, it's nice. Like it's got the NBA logo. Oh here. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's high quality. And you know, they're getting like a fucking, a fucking, you know, starter pack whenever they join a team that's just sure. filled with sure, like 20 sure. of those. They could probably just fill out like a Google form and request one if they wanted to. Exactly. <laughs> and these dudes are choosing to go with the sleeves. It's it's I don't get it's it. It's just baffling. I and don't you know get who it. baffles me the most probably is Anthony Davis. Me too. Why are you wearing that? Why are you wearing that? First of all, you got tattoos you're covering up. Second of all, <laughs> you're freaking built like a fucking tree. You He's know ripped, you, dude. You're ripped as yeah. fuck. Like, let me see those guns. I'm trying to see those guns. I paid money to see those guns. <laughs> It's just, ah, oh, it's just, oh, it's disappointing. Like, I, I want to. It's wanna, very disappointing. You got it, like, you just, you got to look the part, you know? Look as cool as you well, can. Like, you're a professional athlete. Perfect. Like, have some confidence. Look, you know? exactly. And, 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 and it even kills if, me. Even if you're not super ripped, like, who cares? It's so funny to me because I remember. You're a professional. I remember, I specifically remember the time as a youth basketball player mm-hmm. that I crossed over mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. wearing the undershirt to not wearing the undershirt. And and it's sad because it was only like the last, I really think just the last two years of my career, my sophomore and junior year of high school. Yeah, but the youth, I ditched the, youth, the undershirt. The youth shirts that they gave us, they were so shitty and so cheap that you could yeah. literally see like your your skin. <laughs> yeah. It was just, it was almost like one of those like you're talking about those Park and Rex jerseys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those, no. those were so bad. I mean, you once, had to wear something under. I agree. So I started with that where like. I had to. And then I went to NJB. Everyone's kind of just used to it. Yeah. NJB. NJB yeah. had jerseys that were nicer and they weren't like that. Yeah, seat yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could get away with no shirt. Sure, sure. But I was in my stage of, okay, my arms look like sticks. Yeah. I well, like, most I, people. Do, exactly. Yeah. I have like acne on like the back of my arms. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm. Th- these are things that like, as a kid, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to wear a shirt under my it's jersey. It's a big deal, yeah. And then you, I, 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 I go on through my basketball career. I'm wearing the shirt. I'm wearing the shirt. I get to, like, my sophomore year of, of, of high school, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm seeing how it looks to, like, not wear a shirt. And I'm like, okay, well, that looks a lot better. And then I think about it. I'm just like, fuck it, dude. Fuck it. I already am not that good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look a little bit cooler and not do the shirt. So I went with the no shirt just for the sake of cool points for my last couple seasons. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy to me to think about how these NBA players are at the top of the top of the pyramid of talent, the pinnacle pinnacle of what they're doing. They're the peak, the best league in the world. Exactly. And these dudes wear undershirts, wear undershirts. And I'm just like, I don't get it. I don't get it either. "Ah." I I don't care if you have a pimple, the size of Texas on the back of your (laughs) arm. I want to see that motherfucker (laughs) right now. 
Okay? You're hilarious, man. I just don't like that they wear undershirts. I don't know. I feel It well, makes me feel awkward. I'm like, why? Like, yeah, it's like, like, it's like I'm looking at you and like you... It's making me uncomfortable. It's making me uncomfortable <laughs> because I know that you're uncomfortable. Yeah, because exactly. the only reason why I wore those because yeah. I was uncomfortable. Yeah, exactly. How are you uncomfortable? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still... Yeah, I don't know how we got on this, but I don't know, but I love it. I love that we got on it. Okay, but because it's become it's become a thing the last <laughs> few years, and it's driving me up the wall. And I hate to point fingers, but I'm going to point fingers right at Unibrow, Anthony Davis. And I'm, I'm doing it. Draymond Green too. He's he's been doing it for a he's while. He's been doing it, but I swear to God, dude, it huh. was Anthony Davis first. I mean, I, he's I, always. I done really want to. Yeah. I really want to hang my hat on that, because when he first came into the league, he was Unibrow. Okay, he was a unibrow who had just won a championship at Kentucky. Okay, but then he came into the league, he got ripped, he got even better, and he started crushing it. So he became a superstar in the NBA like he was in college, and that allowed the whole t-shirt under thing to be guys to see, oh, Anthony Davis does it, I'm good, oh, I'm cool. good, it's cool. it's cool, I'm good. And now it's just become a normal thing. Yeah, You're not going to see a game now where there's not at least one dude on the floor with an undershirt. Oh really? Wow. Oh I Ryan, I've noticed him Ryan, I'm telling you, start paying attention I don't, now. I don't watch basketball like that though. Yeah, know? but but please, from now on, just think about undershirts when you think of the NBA. Yeah. So whenever you see an NBA game on, look for an undershirt. I guarantee there there's one on the floor. Has got to be it's some sort of popular. athletic advantage with it though. Like, why would you wear it? I don't understand. And you know what's funny? You know what's also interesting? Why would they make them? Is really like <laughs> right before Anthony Davis came into the NBA. They're definitely not cold. Exactly. Yeah. Great point. <laughs> I uh, couldn't have said it better. I mean, I mean nobody nobody cold. looks sweatier than an NBA player. You don't need a, like a heat tech. That's what I've always noticed. Uh, maybe it's the camera work. Maybe it's the, the tiny basketball court that you're running up and down. But I swear, there's not a single... I mean, soccer players, I notice it too. They, well, soccer also, players get really sweaty but too. But the shirt too. I mean, you're wearing a... It's a tank top is what you're wearing. So then... So you're going to see all the sweat. Yeah. So, like a soccer, you have sleeves. You, you have know? sleeves. But so you're it still... soaks up more. Yeah, when you think about it, you think like the the... The, the sports where I see the most sweat is definitely soccer and basketball. But that's oh, basketball, make, yeah. That makes basketball sense because they're doing a ton of running. And Soccer's head. And they're I love, wearing the least amount I of I love stuff. seeing soccer players with long hair. Well, and it's awesome. just yeah, doused. That's you know? That's great, yeah. But, dude, right before Anthony Davis yeah, came into the NBA mm-hmm. and started doing the whole undershirt shit, there were a few seasons. like I'm talking like around 2010, yeah. like 2011, like basically around the time that Steve Nash went to the Lakers. Steve Nash went to the Lakers. Okay, yeah. They had these fucking sleeve jerseys. I don't know if you remember these, but they had they had. I do remember these. They had special edition jerseys that they wore sometimes mm-hmm. that had sleeves. Yeah, and you know what's funny thinking about it is like that still looked better than wearing it under, <laughs> under <laughs> yeah, a tank it does, top. It does. I'd rather have sleeve jerseys than the stupid shirt yeah, under the yeah. tank top, and that says everything you need to know about sleeves. Shirts. Sleeves and basketball just top. does not it just make doesn't sense. Make sense. It doesn't make sense because you're you're having to literally. I mean, your shoulder is in, is, full, is in full rotation, motion. full everywhere, motion, everywhere. a lot versus like baseball. It's like not that much, you know, it's not and that football, frequent. You need stuff to protect your body. So it's like you already have restricted movement based right. off your armor that you're wearing. And you're outside. So it's super freaking cold. That too. Yeah. I mean, it's just, okay, well, this is our petition. You can, someone start a petition online at you, we got to ban undershirts from <laughs> NBA because you know, you what's heard funny? it here. We're banning them. <laughs> There's huh. a there's a rule in the NFL. I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Huh. Probably not. Difference between college and NFL players, you'll see. You could you'll see the legs of college players. So oh. so a college player ah. a college player can wear socks like I have on right now uh-huh. and wear sh- and wear low top cleats and then have their pants go down to their knees, which is where yep. they go down yep. to. Yep. And you'll have the knee pad their, their and then calves. you see their entire calf. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the NFL has a rule: every player has to wear long socks and leggings. No legs in the NFL. Why is that? Have you ever noticed that? I don't believe so. It's because of the look. What we're talking right now, it looks oh. so much cooler when everybody on the fucking basketball court doesn't have a damn shirt on their yeah, jersey. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Just like yeah. it looks way cooler when every football player looks like they're in just a whole freaking yeah. uniform. Like they're decked out. Like they're just decked out. Like yeah. I don't want to see... I just want to see the color of the uniform. You know, that yeah. it just it it gives the whole field just a cool look to it. Yeah, yeah when yeah, you're yeah. not seeing some hairy leg with like a bad tattoo. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And it's like the exact opposite in NBA. Mm-hmm. It's the exact. If, if they could go out there with with it, just like shorts on, I might be down for it. I might be down. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers on the butt. Like no. street ball. Oh, that's, have you ever seen anyone wearing an undershirt in street ball? 
Like you're just a, playing outside. Great, I mean, street ball no. is usually shirts and skins, so it's like that's true. That's that would true. that would be kind of funny if they started <laughs> doing that shirts and skins. <laughs> if they made that a rule, yeah, that would be dope. All right, want to wrap on shirts and skins? We can wrap on, <laughs> yeah, we can All wrap right. on that, dude. The shirts and skins, whichever one you prefer. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers up. Mm. One seventeen coming to a close. Love y'all. Love y'all. Peace. Oh.